In today's lesson, we are diving into a workflow for automating fabrication drawings using Rhino.inside. We will focus on placing specific geometry into designated drafting views, which is essential for efficient documentation. This automation not only saves time, but also ensures consistent and precise representation of design elements. Our goal is to create fabrication drawings for the web and flange parts of a steel column by importing these elements directly from Rhino. Without further ado, let us jump right into the workflow. In Rhino, we have created two separate elements, a column flange and a column web. For this type of workflow, it is important to assign each element to specific layers. These layers help us easily filter and extract elements in Grasshopper, which streamlines the automation process. Our first step in Grasshopper is to reference the layers. We begin with the query model layers component, which lists all layers defined in our Rhino file. Currently, we have two layers, one for the column web and one for the column flange. Next, we use the model layer component to extract these layer names. Finally, we apply the dispatch component to separate and organize each layer into individual lists. Now let us move to the core part of this workflow, the reference by layer component. This component pulls in Rhino objects based on their assigned layers. With it, we bring the web and flange geometry directly into Grasshopper. Since these geometries are polylines, and we know that the add detail line component does not accept polylines directly, we use the explode component to break each polyline into individual segments to make them compatible. Before creating detail lines, let us talk briefly about views. We have set up two drafting views in Revit, one for the web geometry and one for the flange. So using the query views component and view family filter, we only retrieve these views to place the elements correctly. When working with multiple views and geometries, having the correct data structure is important. The first item in the view output corresponds to the web drafting view, while the second corresponds to the flange drafting view. To organize our curves to match this order, we use the entwine component to combine our data accordingly. Now we connect the inputs for the add detail line component. We can notice that some detail lines are missing from both views. This happens due to a data structure mismatch. The curve input has two branches, while the view input has only one. To fix this, we need to graph the view input. This will ensure that each branch aligns with its respective curve inputs. Once we make this adjustment, the detail lines display correctly with the web geometry in the web drafting view and the flange geometry in the flange drafting view. Next, we add dimensions to these elements. We connect the view input, set the detail lines as references, and use placement lines for positioning. However, the dimensions are not displayed correctly due to another data structure mismatch. The placement lines have nine branches, while the references only have two. To resolve this, we need to graph the references input. This adjustment matches the data structure and the dimensions appear accurately in both views. Now everything seems to be working properly. Let us take a closer look at the dimensions output. Here we encounter a problem again. Although the output shows nine branches, we have a total of 18 items instead of nine. This results in extra dimensions appearing in our views. The issue arises because we forgot to match the view inputs. We need nine branches here as well. We cannot simply graph this input as it disrupts our annotations. The solution is to create nine branches, each with one item, the first five for the web drafting view and the remaining four for the flange drafting view. We can achieve this using the duplicate data component. Set the data input to the drafting views we want to repeat and use the length of the detail line output as the number. Now in the output, we have five branches for the web drafting view followed by four for the flange drafting view. The final step is to graph this output to generate the nine branches. Once connected to the view input, we see exactly nine dimension outputs, all correctly displayed in the drafting views. Let us move on to the final part of this lesson and put our workflow to the test. We will duplicate these geometries in Rhino 
and observe whether the automation places them in the correct drafting views with proper dimensions. After copying, we update the references. As expected, all web elements go to the web drafting view and all flange elements go to the flange drafting view. This workflow provides a strong foundation for automating fabrication drawings and the same approach can be extended to automate dimensioning across multiple floor plans. Proper data management is essential in this workflow as data mismatches can lead to unexpected results and time-consuming troubleshooting. By maintaining organized and accurate data structures, we ensure the efficiency and reliability of our automation processes. That is all for this lesson. Thank you very much for following along and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson as we continue exploring automation with Rhino.inside.